Uh, we expect another 50 basis points. So at the moment, it's the Fed being 50, ECB being 50, and the Bank of England uh, also going up by 50. So hopefully no surprises there. What is your take on UK equities and the pound dollar? Uh, so we've seen the British pound uh, strengthen pretty materially versus the dollar since the whole uh, mini budget episode back at the end of September, beginning of October. Uh, again, it looks like the pound probably still has a little bit more to run. Uh, it is getting up here towards uh, resistance levels around 123. And so if you were to get a break above this 123 region, you could certainly see the pound rally back up towards 126. Uh, again, it's it, it looks like it might have just a little bit more to go just because it came off such oversold levels and it's really yet to get to an overbought stance on an RSI basis. Um, and so perhaps there's a little more strengthening left there. If we look at the the, the UK 100, the FTSE 100, you can see that this is pretty much the top of the range. Uh, we haven't been able to really materially move beyond this, this region now going back to the beginning of the year. And in fact, it's kind of odd that you would see so much rate tightening and so much uh, you know, uh, so much risk of recession in the UK to due to all these high inflation prices. And the you, the FTSE is trading just a little bit off its all-time highs. Uh, and so, not its all-time highs, but the 52-week highs. And so it, it's kind of uh, ironic to see that. And again, like the other indexes, you can see that it's had a really uh, big, sharp move higher off of its lows, and it's broken that uptrend just a little bit. But there may be some support here for the FTSE around the 7,400 region if it should continue to drop. Right, Michael. Last question. Are you optimistic for 2023? Uh, I think 2023 is going to be a very challenging year. I don't, my view right now has been that we're probably heading to some sort of stagflationary period where we're likely to see sort of this high inflation, low growth environment. I'm not really in the, the recessionary camp at this point. I'm just more of the view that I think we're going to likely see persistent and high high prices, and that's going to probably eat into the consumer, and that's probably going to help to slow growth and just keep things sort of uh, questionable for at least the first six months of the year.